We are going through a lot as Africans and, and we need to liberate ourselves. We need political liberation. We need cultural and social liberation. We need economic liberation. And that's where we can be the best. That's where we can start having fruits of our own. That's where we can start benefiting for, from our own resources. Interference of foreign cooperation and foreign governments. A government in Africa cannot run its business as it is because there is interference of foreign governments. USA controlling the systems. Interference of foreign corporations, IMF, World Bank. And that's how we are suffering as Africans. They're uh, trying to scare you with consequences that they themselves will be imposing. They're warning you that if you do something that is in your country's best interest, they will punish you. This is very different uh, from telling you that the policy in and of itself is actually bad. They're telling you that they will make it a bad policy because of what they will do to you if you implement it. You understand? This the liberation of Africa will weaken the West. When you talk about liberating Africa, we have a more aspect to liberate Africa. For example, we can liberate Africa through uh, political uh, liberation, economic liberation. Um, we can liberate Africa through cultural and social liberation and geopolitical liberation, environmental liberation. Yeah. So... Liberation of Africa will collapse the West, but we have to take bold moves and bold uh, uh, decisions so that we can liberate Africa uh, from all these West shenanigans. In today's video, I'm going to react on a video of white professor who has uh, said how the West has captured Africa. Let's watch this video and then we we'll react about it. When you're able to maintain a constant amidst the radical changes that sweep over every other element of international relations, global power relationships, uh, uh, international relations, and so on, uh, when you're able to actually keep something unchanged, it lets you know just how important, how paramount it is that this particular status quo remains intact, how important it is to those who are keeping it intact. And I'm talking now about the West's relationship with Africa. Because the West's economic relationship with Africa has not fundamentally changed in over 800 years. This is absolutely stunning. If the drastic and rapid changes that can occur and have occurred within the West uh, over just one or two decades, if that's breathtaking, well, what about the fact that nothing has changed between the West and Africa in basically a millennium? I mean, the relationship was ruthlessly extractive 800 years ago. And it's ruthlessly extractive now. And you can't help but recognize that keeping things this way simply must not only be important to the West, but literally it must be the most important thing to the West. It's so important to them that they have always maintained this status quo no matter what else changes in the world. Wallahi, they're dedicated to the subjugation and the exploitation of Africa more than they're dedicated to anything else. Everything else is allowed to change except for this. This must never change. And it's not difficult to see why. I mean, it's the subjugation and the exploitation of Africa that has enabled the West to impersonate a superior civilization. It's like a con man, you know, a drifter who tries to convince people that he's some sort of an aristocrat or a monarch or something. Well, he needs to have some kind of a display of, uh, of a monarch's wealth in order to be convincing. And that's been the whole basis for uh, what the West claims about itself being superior. The whole basis has always been that they're materially successful. So, okay, today you have iPhones and technology, you have a high standard of living and so forth. So that means that you must be better. You must be more intelligent. You must be more evolved. You must be more civilized, more advanced than the rest of us. I mean, look how nice their places are. See how much better their stuff is. Well, this is all reliant upon the vicious pillage and plunder of Africa. Without this subjugation, uh, without this exploitation of Africa, Europe and the West would be nothing but crude, emaciated serfs, barely producing enough to survive. Their wealth was primarily derived from theft and plunder, from piracy and slavery, from mass murder and crime. This is just a historical reality. Because of the subjugation of Africa, first through chattel slavery, the extraction of Africa's human resources, 
And now, through the extraction of natural resources, uh, the West uh, has been able to maintain this artificial, unearned status as a so-called civilization, keeping Africa subject, subordinate, suppressed, and impoverished is an existential need for the West. It's the only way that they can keep up the pretense of their supremacy. Because again, uh, the pretense of their supremacy has never been based upon any actual advancement, any actual sophistication, any actual moral or intellectual development. It has always been based on the violent accumulation of wealth and resources, upon brute power, deceit, and conniving. And Africa, the, the, the subjugation of Africa, is the most vital necessity for keeping this con going. I mean, right now, the trade relationship between the West and Africa is that something like 70% of exports to Africa from the West are manufactured goods, and imports from Africa are just the raw materials used to make those manufactured goods. So they're taking from Africa what is needed in order to produce goods uh, that then Africa buys from the West, made with their own raw materials. And the West has done everything possible to try to impede Africa's ability to build its own manufacturing base so that they could potentially use their own raw materials, use their own raw minerals to produce their own goods. I mean, the whole process should be done in-house. It should all be done in Africa. That's what makes sense. You know, you have the materials, you have the minerals, you can make the products. That's how it should be. Rather than giving your uh, raw natural resources to the West... Uh, for them to manufacture and refine and process and so on, Africa could do all of those things themselves. I mean, imagine the impact that would have. Where would that leave the West then? Well, they know that. The West knows that. They're acutely aware uh, of their actual total dependence upon Africa. If Africa manufactured, uh, if they used their own resources, uh, their own minerals, their own materials for their own industries, well, the entire economy of the West would collapse. And with the collapse of their economy, their whole so-called civilization would collapse. A Africa is the foundation upon which they built their house. So they know this. And like I said, this is why no matter what else changes in the world, no matter how power dynamics shift in the world, uh, the subjugation of Africa uh, has been maintained for over 800 years. There's literally nothing more important to them than this. And this is why there are very powerful factions in the West that want to destroy BRICS. And why they fearmonger about uh, Chinese investment in Africa. And why America specifically is engaged in non-stop interference. Covert operations, regime change, uh, regime infiltration projects all across the continent. I mean, look at uh, South Africa, the ANC. Either out of uh, naivete or corruption or naivete that devolved into corruption, or out of coercion, or some combination of all of these factors, uh, the ANC collaborated with neoliberal programs uh, for 30 years. I mean, to one degree or another, for the last 30 years. But as global power dynamics have been shifting, uh, and the creation and the ascendancy of BRICS has been taking place, people have started to have aspirations. And more importantly, uh, they've started to have options. And those options... Uh, have made their aspirations actually achievable. I'm talking about aspirations of political independence, aspirations of economic sovereignty, aspirations of getting out from under the yoke of the West. That's actually becoming achievable now. So the ANC uh, was facing, and they are facing, severe criticism and opposition. They were being challenged, uh, and they were being challenged by parties that do not accept neoliberalism, neoliberal colonialism corporate colonization, and the U.S. knew that eventually they were going to lose power. Eventually, the ANC was going to uh, face the consequences of capitulation and collaboration, and they were going to be removed and replaced. And if the U.S. didn't do something, then the replacement for the ANC was not going to be an obedient client. Because again, uh, South Africa has the option now not to be an obedient client of the West. I mean, as long as there were no options, then it wasn't that risky for uh, America. Even if the ANC lost popularity, no matter who replaced them, they would have no choice but to capitulate to neoliberalism because there was no options. But there are options now. So you have the United States then uh, backing the so-called Democratic Alliance, the DA, which is an, uh, an overtly neoliberal, Western-aligned, elitist political party of colonizer collaborators. So the unpopularity and the opposition to the ANC opened a space for the DA to move 
uh, into the government in the last election. So now you have this so-called GNU, the Government of National Unity, which is nothing but a neoliberalism light and a neoliberalism hardcore. It's a coalition of one party that was aligned with the West, the ANC, aligned with the West out of coercion or naivete or corruption, but which could have potentially been influenced by uh, anti-neoliberal uh, populist sentiment if given a chance. Now they've joined together with a party that is intensely committed to colonization, intensely committed to neoliberalism. I mean, they want to privatize everything. They want everything to be sold off to the private sector. They want to hollow out the government completely. And, and you need this radical neoliberal colonizer faction to be there because as the new options have emerged, you've now had radical anti-neoliberal positions being uh, advocated and, and becoming viable. I mean, you're actually having calls for the nationalization of industries rather than the uh, privatization of state enterprises. Well, the West can't have that. So they need something like the DA, the Democratic Alliance, uh, to move in to try to avert the threat of South Africa actually becoming politically independent and economically sovereign. You know, they call it the GNU, but the N shouldn't stand for national. It's the government of neoliberal unity. It's a coalition united against the people of South Africa, in my opinion. So in South Africa, this was a regime infiltration project that was undertaken to actually avert regime change in South Africa. So you're not allowed to talk about anything that isn't basically a policy genuflection to shareholders and to Western supremacy. But everyone knows that these are good policies that would help South Africa. And that the only reason anyone would think uh, that they might not be good for South Africa is because they know that doing a policy that's good for South Africa would uh, uh, prompt a hostile, retaliatory response from the West. Well, like I said, that should show you what kind of a friend the West is. But look, uh, South Africa and all the countries in Africa, all the countries in the Global South, in fact, they're in a position today to actually dictate the terms now. If Westerners want to pull out their capital, so say you nationalize, okay, if Westerners want to pull out their capital, they want to withdraw their investments, okay, go ahead. Dig around in your own lands for the minerals you need to make your stuff. And good luck to you. I mean, we have other investors anyway who can take your place. There's other companies that we can partner with. You're not the only ones. So the only question really is, how much are you interested uh, in boosting the economies of China, the economy of Russia, the economy of the Gulf? How much do you want to see the BRICS countries surpass you economically? You know, BRICS already accounts for more of global GDP than the G7. So if you want to pull out your investments, you pull them out. Go ahead. You can only harm yourselves. No. South Africa and the Muslim world and all the uh, global South countries, it's time for them to break away from this paradigm, break away from Western domination and start implementing all of those policies that they know perfectly well will benefit them, whether America likes it or not. I mean, can you imagine if the Gulf countries didn't put their oil sector under government control? Where would they be now? But look at where they are now. Look at the amount of capital they have now. Why South Africa uh, could have and should have a comparably uh, massive sovereign wealth fund. There's no reason for them not to. No, this millennium-long system of subjugation needs to come to an end. And it really doesn't matter if the road to liberation is a little bit rocky. I'd rather be traversing a rocky road than be buried under the rubble, which is where the West has kept Africa for centuries. This is the richest and most important continent on the planet. And the West stole your riches and they stole your importance and they've been an imposter on the throne for far too long. It doesn't make any sense to be afraid of someone whose power is actually dependent upon you. That's, that's a psychological power, not an actual power. They have a psychological power over you. Welcome back. Ah. Uh... This white professor has talked something that um, I love and I love to hear and is what we are talking about every day is um, what Pan-Africanists are talking about every day. And um, the issue with Africa is that uh, we are not liber uh, liberated. We are still under colonial system. Um, there's no change in Africa since way back. 800 years has passed since Africa has remained the same. Everything is changing. Even we have robots and everything. Everything is changing in the world. But they cannot allow Africa to change. They cannot allow Africa to liberate itself because here is where they, you know, they get all the resources. Here is where they get everything to build their country, to build their houses. Now, 
as I, as I started the video, I said we can liberate Africa through political uh, liberation. Political liberation, we can, uh, by strengthening the democracy, strengthening the democracy of Africa or countries in Africa. Because many African countries are experiencing, uh, many African countries are experiencing colonialism, dictatorship, you know. Political liberation would mean promoting genuine democracy where leaders are accountable to their people through free and fair election. Political liberation. Strengthening democracy. That's what we need to do so that we as the people of Africa, we can vote our people in a free and fair election. We put people into power who we have not elected them. We put people in power who are dictators, but simply because we have not voted for them, they acquire everything because they don't know what will come tomorrow. They don't know if the people will revolt. So whenever they've been in power, they steal, they grab everything. So we need political liberation to strengthen democracy. Okay? Uh, we need to decentralization of power, empowering local governments and communities so that decisions that affect people's lives are made closer to home, leading to more response governance instead of making decisions in uh, Geneva, Italy, France, Spain, USA. We are going to make decisions of Africa in China. We are going to make decisions of Africa in just, you know, far countries. We need to do what? Decentralization of power. Yeah. Poor. Okay, <laughs> So, we find decisions that are made in Africa. Maybe a country uh, in Sudan, maybe a country in Congo, Rwanda is having problems. But the decisions of the country are being made in Geneva, are being made in USA, are being made in Korea, are being made in Russia. We need to do what we call decentralization of power, where the decisions of the countries are made near our home. For example, we have the United, uh, not United Nations, uh, AU. AU need to be the one that is uh, solving our problems of Africa. But AU, I found that like, uh, it's uh, just a tool of uh, being used by the oppressors too. So we need to fight against corruption. Co corruption often undermines political stability and development, establishing strong legal uh, frameworks. Independent judicial systems and transparency can help liberate African states from corrupt practices. Fight against corruption is the thing we need to do. And that's why you see young, bold Africans, um, uh, youths are speaking out against corruption. The other day, there's a video I did about um, a bold African youth from um, South Africa condemning corruption that is being done by the uh, Southern African president, uh, Ramaphosa. I have done a video where a young and bold African a youth from Kenya was condemning a corruption that is being uh, done in Kenya and all over Africa. So, these are the things we need to do so that we can liberate Africa. Africa is dying. Africa is not changing. Instead of going in, uh, in front, we are going backward. We are not changing. 800 years down the line, Africa is still the same. We are slowly, for example, a road in China, a road in USA, a road in, they are not talking about the building of roads. It's being done by a 
snap of an of a, of hand but in africa change it's very very slow very very slow is because they don't want us to change and you have heard from uh, this white professor telling it how it is we need to have pan african unity strengthening bodies like au to promote africa intra african cooperation can help uh, push back against uh, external control and manipulation allowing african nation to chart their own destiny together au has to be used as a tool of pan african unity because there is where african leaders can come together and chat and see the way forward to push africa forward but if we don't have unity if au is the one that is causing this unity if au is just closing their eyes while seeing things are being happened manipulation is being done in africa and we don't have a tool where African countries can come together and discuss their issues without any interference of the white supremacy. So, we need to push the urge of pan-Africanism. And that's how we can liberate Africa. That's how we can liberate Africa on what we call political liberation. Because this is what is eating us up. Political liberation we need to liberate ourselves strengthening our democracy decentralization of power fighting against corruption and pan african unity that's what we need to do another thing about liberating africa we can liberate africa through economic economic liberation you know we have economic independence because uh, African countries often depend on the export of raw materials to the West. Now, while importing finished goods, economic liberation will mean uh, diversing economies, promoting manufacturing, and fostering intra-African trade to reduce dependence on foreign powers. We have the resources, but we cannot manufacture. We have raw materials, we cannot manufacture. We have to export and import finished goods where we are exporting in a very cheaper price and importing at a very high price this means what this means that we don't have freedom of economy this means that we go suffer if we don't manufacture our own raw materials they go use us how can you export gold at a very cheaper price and importing um, uh, uh, finished products from gold at a very expensive and more expensive so we need to have economic liberation okay ownership of resources because uh, many african countries have natural resources their own natural resources but much of the wealth goes to foreign corporations naturalize naturalizing or renegotiating deals that allow Africans to benefit from their own resources is the key. Okay? Renegotiating deals that allow Africans benefit from their own resources is the key and the way forward to liberate Africa economically. And by doing this will be the fall or the collapse of the West because the West are depending on us Africans. But they are depending on us to remain as we are. They are depending on us to continue fighting, to continue having internal wars, to continue having corrupt leaders so that they can eh, mingle in between and do their business without interference. So we need to have what we call ownership of resources. And I've seen Burkina Faso President uh, 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 Ibrahim Traore is trying to do this. He is trying to liberate Africa from all this uh, we can encourage entrepreneurship and uh, we can uh, invest into infrastructure improving our infrastructure like roads uh, energy and technology will help us liberate africa you know encouraging entrepreneurship will help liberate africa economically and that's what they don't want us to do cultural and social liberation okay this is where we emphasize history 
African history, values, and traditional can help break away from colonial uh, or colonial mentalities and brainwashing. Education reform, shifting educational system can help uh, in liberating Africa. Gender equality and human rights can help liberate Africa in a social and cultural liberation. Another thing we need to do is geopoly liberation, geopolitical liberation by by reducing the external influence, by reducing the influence of the West, by reducing the influence of France, Russia, and all these countries in Africa. Because African nations, uh, 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 they deal or we deal with political and economic interference from foreign governments, you know, and corporations like uh, IMF, World Bank. You see, we don't have our rights. We cannot make our own decisions. So liberating Africa requires a constant efforts or constant efforts from governments, civil society, businesses, and individuals. By doing this, we can weaken the West. By doing this, we can weaken the influence of the West in Africa. By doing this, we can become the superpower. We have the capability to become the superpower in Africa. We have the capability to run our own things without without any interference from the West. I have told you, and we have heard from the white uh, professor, that Africa has remained the same 800 years down the line. There is no change. And we are here. We are still fighting the colonialism. We are still fighting neocolonization. We are still oppressed. We are still uh, not gaining from our own raw materials, our own resources. We cannot manufacture our own products. We are depending on them because this is how they want. And they have positioned our, the system so that Africa can remain in this shell of being conquered, in this shell of being manipulated because we don't have a political uh, stability. We still have corruption. We, st we cannot decentralize our powers. We have a lot to do so that Africa can liberate. I don't know what you think on the comment section because I don't want to dilute more of what the white professor said. But it's time for the youth of Africa. Here is where we are looking for answers. What are we going to do? What we are going to do is to promote pan-Africanism unity. The unity of African countries. The unity of the leaders of Africa. When a Ghanaian, a Ghanaian leader speak or Ghanaian leader speak, Malian leader or Kenyan leader, they must speak one language so that the West people cannot uh, get a chance to manipulate us. Whenever we have these weak bonds, that's where we get free, uh, free uh, electrons and that's where a lot of manipulation is going in between. But whenever we have strong bond we can do something great for our country, Africa. We can do something great for the future of Africa. Liberating Africa is the only way to go. Political, economically, social and cultural liberation. And that can make Africa great again. That's the only way we can move forward as Africans. I see where a Rwandian, a Rwanda leader is speaking, Rwanda president is speaking, Uganda president is speaking, but they are not in one term with Senegal president. They are not in one term with the Egyptian president, with South African president. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to, you know, because of corruption. And here is where China is invading Africa. Russia is invading Africa. The France is invading Africa. USA is invading Africa because of the weak van der Waals we have against us. I've used scientific terms for those who are uh, too deep in science. Because we have weak bonds between us. Because we don't have the pan-Africanist unity. Political instability is affecting us. There is no free and fair election that we can choose our leaders who we want, our leaders who we think they are the best. So we are going through a lot. We are going through a lot as Africans and we need to, uh, to liberate ourselves. We are going through a lot as Africans and we need to liberate ourselves. We need political liberation. We need cultural and social liberation. We need economic liberation. 
and that's where we can be the best. That's where we can start having fruits of our own. That's where we can start benefiting for, from our own resources. Now we have resources and cannot help us. We have resources and we, we cannot because we are exporting resources at a very cheaper price and importing finished goods, finished products at a very higher prices. Interference of cooperation, foreign cooperation and foreign governments. A government in Africa cannot run its business as it is because there is interference of foreign governments. USA controlling the systems. Interference of foreign corporations, IMF, World Bank. And that's how we are suffering as Africans. We need to liberate ourselves and it will start with you. It will start with me and with you. Pan-African unity is what we need to do. That's the first step we need. Pan-Africanism unity. So that we can speak, at, we can have one language. And by doing this, the West cannot interfere with us. They cannot break the bond we will have. Tell me what you think on the comment section about this video. I am the Kenyan Beast, of course. We are doing it the African way. Until next episode, peace be with you.